I receive a lot of requests to look at one bike or another, but there's one bike in particular that keeps coming up frequently in the comments section, and that's the Mirax Finesse. They're usually about $200 on the Walmart website, so when I found one for $186, I decided it was time to give it a look. For a sub $200 bike, the stats look pretty decent on this thing. And on top of that, and unlike most other big box bikes, this one actually gives an exact frame size. I've had this bike for over two months sitting in this box in my living room. And in two months of staring at a box, you start to notice little details about it. Like the nice artwork that they included, but also the deficiencies. Like when it says Finesse, Italian Authentic Performance Sports Brand. That's all fine, but they lose me a little bit when they say to be the leading authentic performance sports brand inspired. I'm also not particularly fond of companies that state one thing on a box, like it holds riders up to 330 pounds, but then mention in their documentation that it's only for riders up to 220 pounds. But I didn't buy this thing for the box. I bought it for what's inside. And inside, initially, looks like a really nice bike. There's a saddlebag that comes free, you also get a bottle cage, and some questionably thin tires for a mountain bike. But overall, things look good. You even get gold hubs. There's so one thing you really need to know about buying this bike, and that is, you'll need to assemble it. And the assembly is not your standard Walmart bike assembly. You don't just stick handlebars and a front tire on this thing and ride off. You have to install the brake rotor on the front of the bike. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to need to take it to a bike shop. That's going to add cost onto this bike, so that needs to be factored in. If you are assembling this yourself, it's not rocket science. You just need to pay attention to the orientation arrow and make sure that everything's tight. These are your brakes. You don't want them to fail. You'll also want to take some alcohol and wipe down the rotors. Mine came out of the box with a lot of grease and box dust. You'll want them to be clean so they don't make noise and they stop well. I was headed down to my local bike shop to pick up a new bike anyway, so I decided I would take this opportunity to let them do the work for me. And I'm kind of glad that I did, because there were quite a few adjustments that were needed to get this thing trail ready. The front rim needed some attention to get it back in true, and also the rear brake cable needed to be replaced. That's another five bucks on the cost of this bike. On top of that, the derailleur hanger needed to be adjusted, as well as adjustment to both the front and rear derailleurs. After about 20 minutes worth of adjustments, I've got a Mirax Finesse ready to hit the trail. This is my first good look at the bike now that it's assembled, and I gotta say overall I'm very impressed, but there are a couple of question marks, like this alloy stem that looks like it may be cast instead of forged. Not only that, but I think I see casting marks where it may have been pulled out of the molds too quickly. You also get 6061 handlebars, seem very well made, and pleasantly you get some very comfortable lock-on grips. Shimano EF51 trigger shifters take care of working through those 21 speeds. I'm a fan of these shifters. I've had them on a million bikes and they're rock solid. I was surprised to see a tapered head tube, but I think this may be a faper. A fake taper. We'll find out in another video. The suspension fork has 80 millimeters of travel, is non-adjustable, super stiff, and has some ultra beefy stanchions. That's the good. The bad isn't really bad, it's just kind of tacky. This thing has a million stickers on it, and some of them don't even make sense. Like the one that says Finesse Super Sport World Centlery Classic. I'm assuming they meant to say Century and misspelled it. There's also the Ride Fork that looks like a Rock Shocks logo, but sounds like the Fox Shocks motto. Beyond that, you get noted that this is a Sport Series and that it's Italy Noble Finesse. Where I'm really lost on this is when you're told to go to a website that doesn't exist. That's not confidence inspiring. There's also the standard warning sticker and a sticker that tells you which direction you should ride the bike in. The biggest problem I have with this bike is the tires. This is supposed to be a mountain bike, but it comes with what looks like hybrid tires. They're Kendas, but they're not any specific model. They're just Kenda Kendas. And they're tiny, 26 by 1.95. You do get double wall aluminum rims. They seem to be well made and lightweight. The wheels are quick release, at least in the front. In the back, they bolt on. That's an odd choice for a bike in this price range, but at least you get gold quick release skewers in the front. That gold matches that gold hub, which by the way is a men join branded hub. The disc brakes, 160mm rotors, and calipers that are branded finesse. Couldn't find anything else on them. 
The drivetrain is all Shimano and the derailleurs Torni TZ series on both the front and the rear. These adjusted well and I haven't had any problems with them. Everything's connected by a chain that's kind of generic. It just has a stamped bike logo and says Bicycle Chain 01. Crank set is an aluminum triple set 42-34-24. Crank arms forged alloy and you also get some decent alloy pedals. The frame is a high point. It's an alloy and very lightweight. The entire bike only weighs about 30 pounds. It also has kind of a modern look to it. Seems to be well put together. The 31.8 millimeter aluminum seat post finesse branded lightweight quick release and has a saddle that's surprisingly comfortable. For the money this thing has some decent components. The one thing you'll have to get past is the overemphasis on branding. Almost every component on this bike has a finesse brand or a logo of some kind. Sometimes multiple logos. The only thing that was safe was the kickstand. With concerns about those hybrid tires and that super stiff suspension, it's time to get this thing on the trail. And on the trail, it was about what I anticipated starting out. Very rough. That non-adjustable 80mm front suspension is very radly on this trail. Not only that, those hybrid tires are making it a little difficult to get traction on some of the turns. But I think I may settle into that as I get further into the trail. And I have to admit, riding this bike, I went in thinking I wouldn't like it simply because of the suspension and those tires. But it's sort of like seeing a movie that you had a bad build up for. So when you saw it and it was okay, it actually made it seem pretty good. I think that may be what I experienced with this bike. Because yes, it is rough, but once I got used to what it could and couldn't do traction wise, I started having some fun. Then I realized how unwinded I was after I was climbing some of the hills that usually burn me out. This is an excellent hill climbing bike. It's not only that, I didn't have any problems with traction going uphill. Downhill, sometimes. Uphill, not at all. So I couldn't help but think how great this bike may be if I had decent mountain bike tires on it. I'm seeing a lot of potential here because having a bike that makes me enjoy going uphill on trails opens up quite a few trails that I normally avoid. As I've mentioned before, I really don't like climbing hills. I'm just not good at it, and I'm always worried that I'm slowing the people down that are ahead of me. On this bike, I'm practically running them down on every hill climb. That's a whole new paradigm in mountain biking. And as the day progressed, not only was I still in great shape to continue on, I was able to tackle routes up and downhill even with those limited tires. Again, think of how awesome this might be with some decent tires. There's something that feels good about having 26 by 1.95 tires and hanging with someone on an XR Pro, both down and uphill. He's a much better rider than me, but granted it's his first time trying out the XR Pro, so I'm sure he's being a little bit cautious. But still, I'm having fun, and that's what biking's all about, having fun on your bike. Well, at least I was having fun on it, because when we switched and I was on the XR Pro and he was on the Finesse, his response wasn't quite as enthusiastic as mine. Now, what do you think? Uh, I would honestly probably run down that hill barefoot before I took this bike downhill again. <laughs> By the end of the day and after a couple of hill climbs, he wasn't quite as harsh on it, but other riders had an even more favorable opinion than I did. I like that bike much better than this one. I would recommend that bike to a beginner before I recommend it this one. It's just lightweight, climbs great. Uh, the front fork's a little stiff, but that helps with the climbing. A lot better than this fork. It's gonna be Yeah, the suspension definitely is too stiff and there's no adjustment. And these tires are definitely too thin, but like gravel, I was having a problem. But everything else, as long as I stayed clear of the roots, Pretty good. Yeah, it rides and climbs super. Best climbing bike I've ever ridden. That's supposed to be a mountain bike. Minus the roots, I mean, it, it felt pretty flowy. Just rolled down the trail. What a difference a few hours makes. I left the bike shop not expecting much out of this bike. I left the trail really liking this bike. I'm going to be putting new mountain bike tires on it, see if we can get some more traction, and hopefully turn this into a great mountain bike. So stay tuned for future videos on that. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and the notification icon to be informed when new videos come available. Thanks for watching and have a great day.